my lovelies and welcome to today's reading vlog. I just wanted to quickly jump on here and say the beginning of this vlog is I recorded at the end of my previous vlog, if that makes sense. So I basically, I let the random number generator pick one more read and so that's where the start of this vlog is going to start. It's going to start with the number generator picking my next read after I read Bride and then we'll go from there but obviously it's very choppy like it's going to start straight away so I just wanted to give a quick little intro just explaining that we're going to start with that and then we're going to continue with today's vlog so I will be back later in the vlog looking like this because I just recorded a quick reading update but yeah I hope you enjoy today's vlog and I will now let past Victoria take it away with the number generator. So that now means that I need to pick my next book. And as always, not as always, as before, I don't know. I don't know. So we're going to the number generator. These are the four books we're going to be choosing from. We've got Once Upon a Time by Stephanie Garber. The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. And I have added The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. We are going to do it as, because I've done it like that, we'll go one, two, three, four. So those are the numbers that have been allocated to the books. Let's see. We've got one minimum for maximum. You can see that I'm recording. One. We've got one. The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. This might be a nice kind of, break actually from any fantasy paranormalness this isn't a big book it's um how many pages is it actually it's, it's like 250 pages so hopefully this won't take me that long to get through and the font's pretty big and it's a children's book and there's pictures in it and you know this is just gonna be a light fluffy cozy read I think I don't think this is gonna weigh too heavily on the brain, which I think might be a good a good next read for me. Yeah, I guess we should, well, I can't start it right now because I need to leave for work, but I will be picking this up. It might not be this evening because I've got a friend coming over, but probably tomorrow I'll pick this up. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, with E.H. Shepard's classic decorations originally published in 1931. Oh, yay. It's just, oh, look, that's just scream spring, doesn't it? Oh, look, that, look at that. That is the vibe right there. That is where I want to be right now. I guess I need to make a wiggle and go to work. But I will see you guys in the next clip. ignore how tired I look but I've just realized that I haven't given a single update oh oh I haven't given a single update on the wind of the willows and I am very close to finishing it I'm on page 186 and oh let's ignore just ignore the background for me okay but let's I need to give you I need to give you an update because <laughs> I've been reading it and I just haven't been updating you with my thoughts and opinions on it. So, the friendship in this book. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw two pigeons just run across. Anyway, <laughs> the theme of friendship and found family in this book is just adorable. Like, the friendship between these characters is so pure. I don't think I've ever read such pure friendships before and obviously this is a children's book but it was written in like 1908 or something crazy like that hang on let me double check 
Yeah, 1908 was the original publication of this book. It's considering so that's like a classic, right? This is considered a children's classic. It's so easy to read. It's actually a joy to read. I'm having such a wonderful time reading this book and reading about these characters just living their daily lives. The friendship between Mole and Rat, specifically Water Rat, is just one of the purest things I think I've ever read. Adorable, but not just their friendship, like just the friendship in general in this book. Oh, it's just so cute. And Toad is a menace. <laughs> Toad is one of the most chaotic characters I think I've ever read about. This boy, this man, this toad man's a menace. And the chapter I'm about to read is called The Further Adventures of Toad. Absolute chaotic animal. <laughs> this character is just unhinged in the funniest way. <laughs> and I can't read, I can't wait to read this next chapter and just see what he gets up to <laughs> because it's just what he gets up to compared to the other characters it's just <laughs> like I don't want to spoil anything in case you ever decide to read it and I would highly recommend it if you have never read it I'm probably currently this book is sitting at 3.75 to a four star I haven't quite decided on the rating just yet but I'm really enjoying it I'm having a really fun time reading it it's a really easy read like nothing intense like it is a children's book but I also just love the way it's written like you wouldn't have thought it was written in 1908 it's just especially after reading and I am currently listening to Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies like that old English way of speaking it's weirdly comforting and I'm just having the best time reading it especially with like this gorgeous weather we currently have just I'm having the best time reading this book and I do definitely think that if you're going to pick this up if you're a seasonal reader spring slash summer is the time to read this book a hundred percent yeah I'm pretty close to finishing it so I'm assuming the next time I speak to you will be when I have finished the book and I can give you my final thoughts on it. So, yeah. I'm just going to literally just get straight into this because it's been about a week since I finished this book and I still can't believe I haven't given you an update. I can only apologise, but I finished The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham and I rated this 3.5 stars. This was such a fun read. I had such a fun time with this book. This is my first ever classic that I read out of my own choice, <laughs> taking away like school and stuff. And it is a children's classic. And I do just want to say, if you find, like me, classics quite intimidating, but you do want to get into them and you want to give them a go, start with a children's classic. It's just so much easier but yet because you can tell that this was written when was it I think it was it was 19 first published in 1908 and some of the language used you can definitely tell it was written in that time but it was still easy to read fun to read I had such a good time reading it the character this is a very character driven book there is a plot, but it is more just vibes. It's character and vibes. And I love every single character in this book. I feel like a little part of me is represented in each character, apart from Toad. That man is a menace to society, to his friends and to himself. <laughs> but he was so entertaining and I loved reading his chapters and reading just the absolute anarchy he'd get up. funny I loved reading his chapters so much he was so so funny another aspect that I loved about this book is its highlight of friendship and the meaningfulness of friendships and 
the love of friendships and found family. That was such a strong, prominent message throughout this book. Friends and friendships recently to me have been so, so important, like moving away from family and living in Bath. The friendships that I have made and created, they hold so much value to me. And to see that reflected in this book made me a little bit emotional. This is such a fun time, such a good vibe, perfect to read in the spring. Such a perfect spring. The descriptions of nature in this book are beautiful, are beautiful. And like, obviously it's set in England, so like the English countryside, it just painted such a beautiful picture to me. And because I can picture it because I lived in the English countryside, it just felt like home. This is such a cosy read and I just had the best time. So I gave it 3.5 stars, which I do think is a really good rating still. Highly recommend. And the illustrations in this are so fun as well. Highly recommend, 3.5. It was a great time. I had a great time. So I then, between finishing that book and then starting the next book, I had my 25th birthday and the girlies took me to the city of Wells which I love Wells so, so much. And of course, while I was there, I had to go into the Waterstones. And it turns out that I had a £10 voucher on my membership card. So in my mind, that meant I got a free book. Yeah. And the book that instantly just, and I chose to buy this book before I even know I had this £10 voucher because I have wanted to read it for ages. And it just, every time I've gone to a bookshop, they always had the second and third book, but never the first. So when I saw this, I just took it as a sign and I grabbed it. So that is also the book I decided to basically pick up straight away. And that is Caraval by Stephanie Garber. As you can see, I'm pretty much halfway through at the minute. And I'm using this beautiful bookmark that my beautiful friend made me for my birthday with my favorite flowers on, bluebells. I'm on chapter 19, which is page 185, and I am really enjoying this at the moment. It's giving very much kind of Alice in Wonderland vibe, so that, that very whimsical adventure, um, and I'm just having a good time. I'm really enjoying reading it. I am finding our main character, Scarlet, a little bit annoying, I can't lie. And especially like how her viewpoint around her sister is like on one hand I do understand it because of their background but I'm also just a bit like you're in Caraval and you keep telling yourself you need to enjoy it but then you're not enjoying it because you're too focused on your sister. I'm finding her a little bit frustrating and a little bit annoying but she's slowly warming to me slowly. I would love to give you a synopsis of this book but when my boyfriend asked me what this book is about, I struggled so much to describe it to him. I really struggled. The best way I can probably put it into words is a mystery, uh, every year, a mysterious carnival of some kind appears in a random place and you can only attend if you've been invited. And once you arrive, you can choose to either watch the game, I guess you could call it a game, or you can participate and play in the game. And our main character, after years and years of wanting to partake in Caraval, finally gets the opportunity to. That's such a like dumbed down plot <laughs> or synopsis of this book, but I don't know how else to explain it to you. I'm sorry. But my main motivation for reading this is because I really wanna read the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. And I know you don't have to read the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. No, you don't have to read this to read the Once Upon a Broken Heart series, but I really want to, I want to read this first. And I also don't know how this is going to stretch out over a trilogy, which I'm intrigued by. I want to know like what is going to happen. Because clearly like many things happen and where the plot is currently taking me, I feel like that could very easily be wrapped up in one book. So I'm very intrigued as to what's going to happen that will make this into a series. Does that make any sense? Probably not. But at the moment, this is probably sitting at a 3.5. Like I am having a good time. I'm reading it relatively quickly, which is really, really nice. It's, got, it's going at a really good pace. 
and I'm enjoying it. I'm just having a good time. So yeah, that is a little reading update for you. I don't know what else to say at this point in time. So I guess when I next see you, it will be another reading update or some sort of bookish update content of some kind. My brain's kind of stopped working now. So I'm gonna go and I'll see you in the next clip. <laughs>lovelies um so i am here to give you my final thoughts on caraval by stephanie garber and to essentially also wrap up this vlog um so my final rating for caraval is four out of five stars i really enjoyed this book a lot it's been a while since the book has kind of engaged like a physical reaction out of me and even though this isn't like the best book ever written it's not the best fantasy ever written you know the romance in it like it's it's okay like I'll accept it for what it is and the characters are okay and you know it's not extraordinary but I still had so much fun with this book I had such a good time the world of Caraval is so intriguing to me and it gives such a Alice in Wonderland feel that I did just completely fall into it, which definitely leaves me wanting more. So I will be continuing with the series for sure. 
I guess my main issues first like was the main character she did get on my nerves a little bit at first it did take me probably about three quarters of the book to finally kind of warm up to her but like the fact that I didn't fully warm up to her at the beginning of the book didn't hinge my enjoyment of it too much. Our main character then also has a sister and this sister character annoyed the crap out of me. <laughs> she really annoyed me a lot um, but again it wasn't to the point where I stopped enjoying the book if that makes sense. So like there were these kind of little bits that I didn't thoroughly enjoy but I still really enjoyed the story and the world that Stephanie Garber has created. I think it's really interesting. Like I said, it was giving very much Alice in Wonderland kind of whimsical, magical vibes. The concept itself, I guess, is quite new and original. But then at the same time, I feel like I've read something like this before. Like this doesn't feel like a completely new concept, but that might have also been why I enjoyed it so much. This felt like a very easy book to read. I got through this a lot quicker than I was expecting. I liked Stephanie Garber's attempt at kind of bringing colour into the main character's personality, I guess. So basically throughout the book, our main character Scarlet she kind of says you know I always see people's emotions as colours so whenever like there's like an emotional scene or someone's emotions are being described usually Stephanie Garber will like link it to a colour of some kind and try and make it as if Scarlet can see these colours and these emotions are represented through these colours which I do think is quite cool and I think you know it's a nice concept I didn't quite grasp that's what she was doing at first um so I don't know if that's a theme that's going to be continued throughout the series but I do I appreciated it I thought it was quite cool the mystery behind Caraval and like the because I guess the the whole point of the game is like there's like a mystery to solve I guess that was fun to follow it was just I feel like I'm kind of not talking the book up, but I'm not talking it down either. It was just a fun book. I am glad that I've decided to read this before moving on to Once Upon a Broken Heart, because I do think I, if I did what I did with the Six of Crows, Shadow of Bone, Grisha verse, then I probably would have had the same result. Whereas wherein I read the Six of Crows duology first and then I read the Shadow of Bone trilogy and I feel like if I had gone like the way it should have you don't have to read them in a specific order the same with Caravelle and Once Upon a Bro Broken Heart but if I feel I feel like if I read the Shadow of Bone trilogy first I would have enjoyed it a lot more because when I was reading it I was obviously just comparing it to Six of Crows and the Six of Crows duology I need to reread it because it was just phenomenal and I do feel like I might have a similar situation with this. So I am glad I held off with Once Upon a Broken Heart and read this first. I do think I'll probably like to read the trilogy first before moving on to Once Upon a Broken Heart series. So I do plan to probably get my hands on the next two books in this trilogy. But I overall really enjoyed it. I had a fun time. It was easy to read. It shook me, as you saw, at times. There were moments that something would happen and I really did not see it coming. And that was a lot of fun. But yeah, I feel like it was just a good, fun read. If you've been meaning to pick it up, then like go for it. I don't think you'll be disappointed per se. It won't be like the best read ever. But I don't think you'll be overly disappointed. I had a good time. So I would recommend it. And I am looking forward to seeing where the story is going to continue. So... I guess that is the end of the vlog. I guess I'll quickly let you know what I'm currently reading and that is Shady Hollow by Janelle Black, which I didn't know this until I read the inside of the, the first page, but uh, Janelle Black is a pen name for two authors, Jocelyn Cole and Sharon Nagel. Nagel? So Shady Hollow is written by two people. Yeah, I had no idea. 
Um, but this is what I'm currently reading. I am having such a fun time with this. It's such a short little book. It's so easy to read. The characters are so fun. Um, I'm enjoying it. And it's a nice little kind of, I guess, palette cleanser in a way, I guess. But yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I'm on chapter 11, which is page 76. And it's not a big book. So I'm feeling like I am going to get through it pretty quickly. But yeah, I'm having a good time with it. So my lovelies, that is it for today's vlog. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you so much for being here and for watching it. I hope you are all having a fabulous spring so far and enjoying the lovely hot weather that is gracing us. I mean, according to the weather app, it's meant to then have rain all week next week here in England. So that's fun. <laughs> But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.